Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last night, Astro Rocket finally attempted to launch Rocket 3.1, and after a moment's awkward silence on Twitter, it appears that it was a failure. So this is unfortunate. Astra are a company I've been following for a long time, even since they were in super stealth mode, because they're based in Alameda, a place that I used to live, a place which is on the sunny side of the bay. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been wanting these guys to succeed, and we didn't really know much about them until earlier this year when they finally started streaming parts of the DARPA launch challenge. And we got very slickly produced videos showing their space, their design, their workspace, all sorts of cool internal stuff. But unfortunately, when it came down to it, they failed at the DARPA launch challenge due to weather. They had to scrub. And to be fair, this was Alaska in the middle of winter. Now, with the challenge over, they sort of retreated a little back into stealth mode, although they have, to their credit, been bringing uh, uh, John Krause, rocket photographer extraordinaire, up to Alaska several times to shoot some amazing photographs. Not all of the amazing photographs are of rockets, but anyway. Yes, so they had Rocket 3.0, they continued to work with that, getting it ready for a launch, but then they had a pad incident in March, which resulted in fuel spraying out through a valve that wouldn't close and that resulted in a fire which destroyed that rocket. Good thing is they had a factory, they had another rocket ready to go, that became Rocket 3.1. The By the way, they talk about needing three launches to get to space. This was supposed originally called Rocket 3, 1 of 3, but it was also well known they had had two previous suborbital launch attempts with a slightly different design. And both of these were intended to be suborbital, but they were more suborbital than the people would have liked. They suffer from engine failures and fuel leaks and various other issues. Anyway, yeah, Rocket 3.1, they continued to work with it. They took it down uh, for a couple of launch attempts. We've seen videos of full static fires to show that it works, uh, but they had a couple of failed launch attempts, partly due to weather, partly due to ground issues. And last night, they finally had everything aligned and they were live tweeting it. Yes, it was unfortunate that they choose not to live stream these events. They are highly experimental and I sort of understand their aversion to sharing their failures with the world or potential failures with the world. But yeah, I mean, they, they are streaming this internally to their employees. They're just not letting anybody else see it. So yeah, we got a t countdown on Twitter, some nice pictures, and the launch call out, and then silence. And of course, people start speculating as it gets past like a minute or two. There's no updates on this. Uh, there was no since I said myself, there's no Miko call out. I'm calling this a failure. And my question was, did it move beyond the launch facility? Because we know that the first two launches they attempted both ended up landing inside the Kodiak launch facility grounds and had to be cleaned up. That was one of the ways we were able to track what Astro was doing because there were public documents to document the cleanup of this nature preserve. So yeah, um, they did confirm that it was a failure. They did show us a beautiful photograph taken by John Krause. So I think there's no other place that I think you can see anything like this with the uh, the heat haze, the thermal distortion caused by all that exhaust plume. That is that is a very, very nice picture. Unfortunately, the rest of the flight wasn't nearly as successful. But an hour later, we had members of the public that were local that were observing this themselves. And it looks like these are both cell phone videos in vertical mode, but I forgive you for the vertical mode because it is a rocket going up. And, and yeah, both these cases, they show the rocket going up the engine's stopping, and then about 40 seconds later, there's an explosion on the ground. I'm going to say the first one the, that has some great commentary by just members of the public that, you know, like to see, want to see a cool rocket launch. <laughs> and it's just all very natural. You know, should we go help? No, we. I think we have a baby. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. So what we do also see is that in the second one, which was closer, about a mile away by the looks of things, they you can actually see the rocket spin out after the engines get shut off because there's nothing to keep it stable. And then it breaks into two parts and it breaks cleanly. So 
I'm presuming that that broke along the staging interface between the first and second stage. And indeed, you can see that the first stage falls faster and creates a bigger explosion. The second stage creates a smaller explosion, which you probably don't even notice. The whole thing, yeah, I figured out it. The engines were firing for about 25 seconds, and then it takes about 40 seconds for the booster to fall back. And if you completely, if you imagine there's no air resistance, that puts the peak speed at about 150 meters per second and an altitude of about 1800 to 1900 meters. But there's definitely air resistance involved, so these values are necessarily lower just due to the laws of physics. Uh, the upper stage takes a little longer to fall. Um, but yeah, uh, these are interesting documents and you should definitely go and watch them to, to see what goes on. So Astra, they then published a blog post this morning explaining what they believe went wrong and it was down to control instability. After getting off the ground, they started to pick up uh, an oscillation so their control system wasn't damping some particular modes. And as the rocket went up, it began to go off course and their, their you know, flight requirements indicated that they had to trigger the flight termination system. So there are five engines on the first stage of the Astra. The engines were working fine, right? Or presumably the engines were producing enough thrust. They didn't fail. There wasn't an RUD here. Maybe there was a problem with the gimbals. Maybe there was a problem with the guidance system. But the fact that they all shut down cleanly, it kind of shows that at least their engine game is on point. Uh, it was probably something else. Uh, so yeah, after they shut that down, it then had to fall back to the Earth. So look, I think that's probably an improvement over their first two launches, which I hear were, were failures due to problems with fires or in, in the engine section. However, yeah, it's unfortunate that the rocket once again fell back and landed on the ground and they're going to have to do another cleanup. Elon Musk was quick to offer his, uh, you know, his wisdom, let's say, offer, <laughs> offer his condolences. And Chris Kemp came up and said, well, we've got Rocket 3.2 and I hope they get that flying. It would be kind of cool if they had called it Rocket 3.11 for work groups, but, you know, I'm a nerd. They've missed the windows of opportunity on this one. Um, but that being said, Astra is sort of, I've heard that Astra are now running out of money and they've got enough cash to see them through to the start of 2021. They had to uh, lay off about 30 employees, so they're down about 20% of their workforce. They are looking for more investment and I don't think this particular instant is going to help them. Although, you know, yeah, if they get 3.2 flying sooner and get it actually into orbit, that would be fantastic. But I, I'm starting to worry that Astra may not make it all the way there, which is unfortunate because, as I said, I, I like them. I love the fact that they're based in the Bay Area and they're full of people that I sort of... people Friends of friends, let's say. Uh, elsewhere, by the way, in the world, we also had a rocket failure in China, which was even more super, super secret. Uh, this was a, a Chinese remote sensing satellite that was launched on the Kwaizu 1A rocket. This is a three-stage rocket with two solid rocket stages and a third stage, which is liquid. It's built by a company called X-Pace, and I have to say that slowly. Otherwise, it sounds like X-Space, and of course, that sounds like they're ripping off some American company. And clearly... Their designs are in no way related to the Falcon. Um, official word is the rocket flight was abnormal and the mission has failed. Well, great. There are some rumors from knowledgeable sources that this might actually be a failure in the upper stage, the liquid stage. But hey, you know, that's, that's almost as sick. Well, you know what? There was also another thing I've been wanting to make a video about, and that's the Chinese space plane test where you know, they were basically forcing members of the public to take down videos they had taken of the launch on the of this. We, we don't know very much about this, but uh, I am obviously very much looking for more information about that. Those are sort of unrelated things, but yeah, Astra, I hope you do it. I hope you launch because, uh, you know, a Bay Area dude, we're looking, we're rooting for you here, right? I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Fly <laughs> safe.